Hi there! Are you ready to stuff your body with cybernetic implants? Would you like to determine the physical parameters, mental abilities, and talents of your children before they are born? Would you agree to transfer your consciousness to digital media? What about merging your mind with the artificial? Are you ready for the future? No? Then you better get ready. Today, we will talk about transhumanism. Nowadays, technology is developing at rapid speeds. In previous centuries, people lived and died in about the same way all around the world. Today, however, the world around us is changing every day. Black and white televisions gained color, increased the diagonal, and became flat. Mobile phones replaced pagers and turned into portable computers, allowing you to listen to music, take pictures, shoot videos, and store large amounts of information. GPS satellites made it possible to determine their location anywhere in the world, and the internet encircled the whole world. And all of this in less than 100 years. The world around us is getting smarter, but what about ourselves? Are we managing to keep up with technology? And if not, how can we accelerate our development? Transhumanists believe to keep up with technology, we have to integrate technology into us, literally, into our bodies. Transhumanism is a philosophical and ideological trend, suggesting that the evolution of man as he is now is not completed and can be continued or accelerated by technological means. Transhumanists strongly support technical and scientific progress and advocate the use of its fruits to improve the physical and mental capabilities of man. The development of technology in our world takes place in such a way that it takes an even shorter period of time to reach each new phase. It is not difficult to guess that theoretically, at a certain moment, this gap will become so small that it will tend to be zero. Accordingly, the speed of technology development will become almost infinite. In order for us to be able to realize and most importantly control such a rapid course of events, transhumanists propose integrating technology into a person in order to increase his cognitive, physical, and even creative abilities. To do this, they consider several paths that can intersect, forming symbiosis of various sciences and technologies. Today, genetic engineering allows humanity to receive new species of bacteria, plants, and even animals. For example, luminous plants were bred at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology by introducing firefly genes. Scientists suggest that in the future, the effect will be able to develop so much that plants will replace street lamps. As for the application of genetic engineering to humans, it can be used to treat genetic diseases, improve human health in general, and even prevent aging. But that's not all. Transhumanists say, parents will be able to choose the inclinations and abilities of their children before birth. But do not forget about the dangers associated with such experiments. An example of a victim of a person's consumer relationship is the bananas we all love. As a result of only selection, bananas were on the verge of extinction. Firstly, a person practically deprived bananas of the opportunity to reproduce with the help of seeds. And secondly, cultivated bananas, but unlike their wild counterparts, were unable to resist certain diseases. Genetic engineering is in a hurry to come to the rescue, trying to develop disease-resistant varieties, but in principle, there wouldn't be a problem if the person were just more patient. Not so long ago, cyborgs were known to us only from science fiction films, books, and computer games. But, as has often happened in history, science fiction comes true again. Already today, there are people in the world who can be called cyborgs. Implants that replace limbs, restore hearing, and even vision bring people back to normal life around the world. For others, they provide an opportunity to expand their capabilities. Neil Harbison, the founder of Cyborg Foundation, who has seen the world in black and white since birth, was able to hear colors. Yes, you didn't hear. You just hear the colors through the antenna implanted in your head. Moreover, the antenna allows Neil to distinguish between ultraviolet and infrared. My life has changed a lot since I hear colors, says Neil, because they are literally everywhere. For example, visiting the art gallery where I hear Picasso was the biggest change. I feel like a concert hall. I can listen to the pictures. Supermarkets make a strong impression on me. Walking around the supermarket is very active. It can be compared with a visit to a nightclub. 
It is filled with different tunes, especially a number of them with cleaning products. Amazing! Now imagine that your consciousness can be downloaded to a high-tech computer. Imagine the infinity of the global network and the multivariate interpretation of digital reality. To do this, transhumanists propose to recreate the chemical process of the brain in a digital code. But is it enough to reproduce chemistry, or is man, after all, something more than chemistry and the brain? One more thing, will human life turn into an endless computer game, and will the desired development turn into a superhuman, or degrade into creatures completely mired in virtual reality? Do not forget also, when switching to digital form, only copies of consciousness are created that have nothing to do with you personally. This is just an imagination, but where are you real? Is the shell in which you live so important to the human being? And most importantly, what is human nature? How to copy it? Is the preservation of only one brain sufficient for the continuation of human life in a mechanical body? Can a person recreated in a cybernetic body be sure that he has remained unchanged? What are his real memories? That he generally lived and was not created artificially as a program? Technological development seems to have some limits. Please note that previously the processor power among the inhabitants was characterized by its clock speed. But modern processors increase power due to the number of cores. That is, apparently there is a certain line beyond which quality has to be replaced by quantity. But you can't get around physics. How soon will quantum effects make it unreasonable to further complicate the processors, giving the high level of marriage? Regarding the issue of artificial intelligence, the prospects are overshadowed by the Primrose Theorem, which states that no matter what the power of a computer is, a person is able to do and understand something that is not available to the computer. That is, a person's thinking, not to mention his creative ability, cannot be mathematically described and molded digitally, and the assertion that the brain is a computer is incorrect. The idea of artificial intelligence appeared long ago, but in our time, it is already part of reality. But can artificial intelligence truly be alive? All life forms known to us appeared as a result of natural selection. How will this mechanism be implemented in digital life? Modern programs are becoming resistant to computer viruses, thanks to programmers making changes to the code. But it is likely that the software of the future will be so trained that it can make adjustments to its own copies. Join the possibility of creating hardware on 3D printers, and as it turns out, the person is no longer needed? Even if there is a confrontation between human intelligence and artificial, is it likely that in the end it will degenerate into symbiosis? Or maybe the merger of man with the machine will become a new round of evolution? The technological modification of a human being cannot help but rise ethical doubts. Religious people speak of the impossibility of such experiments in the view of the fact that man was created in the image and likeness of God. But if we consider the issue from this point of view, then will the statement be true that the physical body is in question? However, there are more prosaic questions. Fans of transhumanism are so passionate about the prospects that technological progress can give us that they forget about the politicians, corporations, secret societies, and other powerful structures that influence the development of mankind. The more powerful tools they find in their hands, the more power they gain. Do not forget about the availability of new technologies for the layman because of their cost. Will everyone be able to afford an improved body, or will it become the privilege of a separate group of the elect? How will the modified elite relate to mere mortals? And the need for such technologies for resources will further shift the balance of their distribution, and not in favor of the layman. One of the goals that transhumanism sets itself is the immortality of man. Many will find this prospect quite attractive, but first, let us return to the issue of accessibility, and second, imagine the immortal distraught dictators who are at the helm of the warring states. Are we ready for such a development of technology physically, mentally, and most importantly, morally? Should we flirt with playing God? And if you recall the theory of virtual reality, then do you plunge into another dream at the moment when you need to wake up? Write your opinion in the comments. And that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more.